Okay, um, this uh, lesson is really all about timing. I'm going to base the painting on this uh, photograph um, of some conifer trees on a small spit of land or island, uh, probably somewhere in the Lake District, um, with some nice reflections and with a lot of misty um, background. Um, I'm going to combine uh, maybe two, three or four photographs. That's going to be the main one. Um, and then these here, this photograph here, shows a little bit more background, sort of trees almost hidden by the mist there. Uh, the same with that one too. But to, to generate a little bit more uh, interest to the painting perhaps, um, maybe give it a little more depth of warmth. Um, I'm going to uh, have a, a rowing boat um, just moored uh, near the island and I'm going to use that sort of photograph as a, a basis uh, for doing that uh, and the idea is to end up with a painting which looks a little bit um, like this one here which I did uh, a little while back again Lake District um, type of subject um, if you look at it one of the things I want to uh, just uh, point out to you um, the use of very light areas in the background there um, which allows these trees in the middle and foreground um, which are obviously quite dark to really stand out with the light behind them and the same with the water too if you do um, a painting of a lake or river or whatever and you put as much blue into it as the photograph often shows you'll shut the painting down and so what I tend to do is uh, emphasize the contrasts so we've got a nice light area here going away from the eye with slightly richer darker blues in the foreground and therefore capturing that light between the middle tones down here and the, the tones at the back um, as I say this picture is going to be all about timing um, because we're going to wet the paper and we're going to drop it in various washes and how we do that, the speed at which we do that, will depend on just how much the paper is able to uh, absorb the water. Um, we want to work fairly quickly um, and once we've got a basic background of maybe hills and some distant trees and a bit of sky, uh, we want to leave it there and not fiddle around uh, too much. So the drawing is really, really simple. And that's basically all I'm, I'm going to do. Um, to get the original photograph back again. So I'll just outline the island and its reflection, drawn in where the main um, trees are going to go. I haven't really put any detail in about their branches and foliage and so forth. And then I've drawn in this basic shape for a rowing boat moored off the island with its reflection. And that's all the drawing um, I'm going to do. What I have done though, if you look at the original photograph, there are some rather nice bits of yellow and sort of almost orange foliage. And I've um, masked those off. You probably can't see it at the moment. They're there and their reflection. Um, so that when I put the washes on, um, I retain that uh, bright white uh, underneath. Uh, before I get started, just talk about um, colours. I'm going to use what I call a sort of English palette, um, which some people almost call a, a dark and dismal um, palette. Um, so for the blues, I'm going to use uh, Payne's Grey, and where I want a little bit of warmth, um, I'm going to use some French ultramarine. Um, for the earth colours, I'm going to use good old burnt umber, maybe a bit of burnt sienna, and yellow ochre. Now I could just leave the colour palette at that and make my greens up from a combination of yellow ochre and French ultramarine, and that would help the whole painting look a bit more uh, together. Um, but you may just want to bring those greens forward a little bit, so I'm going to use, you could use a sap green, I'm going to use um, the Daniel Smith green appetite. Uh, genuine. Um, for the brighter yellow foliage there, there's not much of it, I'm going to use a little bit of um, yellow, uh, lemon yellow. 
Um, and I've got another colour here which is a bit like burnt sienna. It's um, quinacridone sienna, again another Daniel Smith colour, which I might use on the foliage which is almost orange. Now that's a specialist colour, you almost certainly won't have it in your, um, uh, your watercolour set. And you can just use burnt sienna or maybe a combination of burnt sienna and lemon yellow uh, uh, to do the same job. Okay, so that's the colours. Okay, so the first job I'm going to do is simply wet the entire paper. Um, now I'm using sort of 425 uh, gram paper here, which means that I'm, I haven't bothered stretching it at all because you're using sort of large washes. If you're using 300 gram paper, then really you want to make sure it's stretched. So, nice big brush. And because these background washes are much lighter than the trees and the island and so forth, then we can paint just straight over the trees. We don't have to worry about painting around them at all. Now I want the paper to be wet, but really more damp than wet. I don't want it to be too uh, wet. I don't want it to be running with water. Um, and so I'm going to start off with some very light Payne's Grey. just to get the, the background uh, going. Let that flow together. It's just a little bit darker. You can do quite a lot just by with the paint's grey, just by different different tones of it, just to uh, get an interesting background there. And getting a nice misty feel to it halfway down the sky. Now I'm just going to put in some of the same colour again towards the bottom of the painting in the water. So that's reflecting the sky. Bring it up a little bit. I want to capture the light um, in the water so I'm going to put in just little bits of the paint spray there, but not too much. Keep that sort of fairly fairly uh, light. A little bit darker as we get to the water at the bottom here. Okay. So I'm not using much of the paint spray at all. Put in some horizontal streaks here, right down at the bottom. Need to get a little bit of water movement. So we're still just using the one colour. Now, whilst that's still wet, I'm going to take some, and warm it up a little bit by taking some um, ultramarine blue and just. You see the effect of that, it just makes the, the water area towards the front, towards the eye, just a little bit warmer, a bit brighter. I sometimes put it into the sky as well, I don't think I'll bother um, this little bit there on the side, let's get it, that's fine. Okay, good. Yes, I might just put a little touch of ultramarine in the sky just here and there. Got to be careful that when you put 
um, a wash into a wash the second wash is a little bit sticky a little bit drier okay and now we're going to combine a little bit of um, paint gray with some burnt umber that's slightly brownish effect This is quite a warm room, so the uh, paint is drying quite quickly. So I'm just using some water there on the brush just to soften some of those edges. Right, dry that off. Now, I'm going to put some more tone in this area here, uh, but lighter tone. Um, I could have done that at the same time as I did everything else, but the paper was drying off quite quickly. So I thought, right, well, let's stop there and um, dry it right off. And then I go into another stage uh, rather than if you, if you, if, it, if things are sort of damp and um, almost dry but not quite dry if you then start to put more and more colour in you can end up with a lot of mud everywhere and so what I've done is I've dried that off with the hair dryer um, I'm now just going to re-wet the paper in the area that I want to work in and I'm going to take that wetness, that, that water, that clear water almost over the entire painter, painting again because I don't want any um, hard edges so by wetting the whole paper again I'll avoid that and hopefully end up with quite a nice very light grey effect okay so I'm going to use the the Payne's grey again with a little bit of burnt umber you a lovely warm grey and I'm just going to and I, I want, want to leave a little bit of light there as well I'm just putting it in nice and fuzzy just to give myself a sort of it could be anything it could be a sort of slightly almost a hill shape it's down here I'm going to leave the paper directly above the island um, light and then reflect that as well here but just very very lightly okay if anything that's um, just a little bit too damp and I'm, I'm getting it it's becoming a little bit too fuzzy at the top to give any um, shape but I'm going to just dry that off with a tissue which then will allow me to go back in again with the same colour but maybe slightly stickier So these could be could be part of a hill, it could be more cloud, or just mist over the, the water. And I'm just getting areas of different tone, different texture and so forth. What I'm doing by putting slightly darker tones around the light areas are making the light areas look lighter you see that there that's beginning to stand out now quite quite considerably 
So if you want to capture the light, you put dark around it. So same colour again, Payne's Cray, bit of burnt umber. Slightly stickier. I'm waiting for the paper to dry a little bit more, so it's all about timing. There we go. So these could be distant trees, they could be just dis distant um, hills, anything you like. And then reflect that again. That's fine. Good. And you get these lovely shapes where the water, where, where the paper is damp. The paint is slightly separating, and I'm getting these lovely, lovely little negative, almost conifer fir type shapes. There we go. Look, I'm putting in a few. What could be distant cone type shapes? These are distant trees in the background there. You don't want to do it too consistently. You don't want to make it look all the same. You just want to. Yeah, that's fine. Good. Well, you don't need to reflect it completely the same, but uh, there we go. So, that's really the background done. I'm going to dry that off again. Right. Um, the next stage is to do some work on the on the island, and I'm going to take a small brush or smallish brush, uh, which is my size four Kablinsky Maestro. Worn, worn brush the tip has gone, which I find quite good for this sort of uh, this sort of job. And I'm going to start off um, with some yellow ochre. Just to give it a bit of a base coat. Because the reflection is reasonably perfect. Oops. I'll do that at the same time. Often leave a little white gap between reflection and um, the actual object itself, which I can feel in later on if it's if it's not necessary, but it just gives a bit of a, a distinction between the two. And then I'm going to use some yellow ochre, mix that into the um, paint grey I've already got, which gives me a sort of a dirty green. With islands like this and so forth, rocks, etc., the main thing is to get changes in texture, which basically means in a painting changes in tone. So bit, this is a bit bluer than it was on the right hand side there. That's fine. Just giving myself some base coats at the moment. A little bit dark.
Now I'll drop in some pure burnt umber. Burnt umber's got a lot of, especially the Winston Newton burnt umber, a lot of uh, red in it. So it's a nice warm colour. I'm not, when I get to this sort of stage, I don't refer to the photograph at all. The photograph is there just to give me basic shapes and so forth. Um, I'm just doing what looks right. Always looking for light areas, dark areas, looking for contrast. Go a little bit stickier with the uh, the two colours, the Payne's Grey and the Burnt Umber. Some lovely dark areas in the photograph. There you go, some nice. And because we've got this white area behind the island, the lower part of the trees, then it's a lovely opportunity to get that contrast going. The dark of the island against the very light area behind. Okay, now you can see a bit of white gap between the island and its reflection. I'll cut that out a little bit later on, leaving some white areas, not too many. Okay, so that's going alright, that's looking fine. Maybe a little bit of pure burnt umber. Take that directly from the tube. That's better. Don't be afraid to work directly from the tube. Okay. Good. So that's the start of the island. Um, now we're going to establish the, the trees um, and so I'm going to start off with a Payne's Grey and Burnt Umber mix and just the island is still wet so the trunk is spreading itself into the island, which is exactly what we want. So I've just established where the, the main parts of the trunks are at the moment. Using sort of a line which is stop and start. And you see how dark this is, it's just um, providing a wonderful contrast. I should actually just be working from base upwards, but uh, I'll be okay. Right, I'm going to let that uh, dry that off. Right, so we've established where the trees are. The thing to do now is to start looking at the foliage. And I'm going to start off with some yellow, uh, lemon yellow. Start over here on the uh, left hand side. Horizontal strokes. Plenty of air gap. A lot of this lemon yellow will disappear at the end of the day. A 
but it gives a light a lighter area for the the green I'm going to use. So you would use sap green. You can make your green up out of yellow ochre and ultramarine blue. I'm going to use this. Um, Green Appetite Genuine. And then I'm going to mix the green with some burnt umber. That's a rather dirty lemon yellow at the moment. But that doesn't matter because we don't want all the trees to be the same, we want them to be different, um, slightly different colours. In fact, for this one here, I'm going to use a bit of, you can either use um, burnt sienna or I'm going to use this um, Daniel Smith colour, the um, Guinacadone sienna. with a bit of green as well. I'm going to use the sienna first of all. See how that's quite a nice bright. Just using these horizontal strokes. So, working very much wet into wet. Leaving what you can describe as bird holes here and there, so gaps between the branches and the foliage. Now this next one I'm going to start off with a bit of burnt umber. I want that tree to come slightly for forward of the, the one to its left. So this is quite sticky. And go in with the green. This is a slightly darker tree. And 
again leaving plenty of air holes or bird holes Good. Okay. And uh, we've got this little one here. Let's go straight in with the green on that one. Now this next one is obviously a slightly different tree and it's got more sort of fair bare branches to it so again using burnt umber just going to flick some of those in and I'm using a rigger Do that. You don't need, in fact, you don't want the branches to be continuous and you don't want them to be sort of fairly flat. You want them to be a bit crooked here and there, getting smaller obviously as we go closer to the top. And then we've got some fairly light foliage out towards the ends of those branches. So I'm starting off with the lemon yellow. Using a little bit of burnt sienna as well just to brighten that up, and then my green. Okay, so the other two trees much the same way and then we'll look at um, removing the masking fluid and doing the reflections. Okay, you see I've done a little bit more work on the trees. Uh, one thing, or two things to point out. If you find your trunks becoming a little bit too prominent, do make sure that you get your some of your foliage to come around the front of the tree. Remember the tree is a three-dimensional object, so you've got branches to the left, branches to the right, branches going back, which would be slightly fainter, um, and you've got branches coming towards you, which will be slightly darker and warmer. Um, and so you make, make sure you get that sort of effect um, on, on your trees. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to do the boat in a minute and then start the reflections, but I'm just going to um, flick in a little bit more foliage here and there. So I'm using the green, a bit of burnt umber, and so forth. Um, just flip that in 
and places. You don't have to go everywhere, but um, a bit of um, positive negative painting there as well. Over the side. Where you've got the light areas down below, that's quite nice, gives you the nice three-dimensional effect. Good. Um, now I've rubbed off the um, masking fluid that I put on. You can see those areas there. So I'm going to use just a little bit of yellow, lemon yellow there. There too. And just run in a little bit of burnt umber or Sorry, burnt sienna or um, this uh, Grakadoan sienna that I've got. And that just gives a little bright area. That's fine, I'll reflect that in a minute. Um, Before I put the reflections in for the trees, I'm going to paint this skiff, this rowing boat, um, and its reflection. So, start off with some yellow ochre. That's its reflection going in. And then warm it up with a bit of burnt sienna. It's just a shape. It's not particularly complicated. It's just to give a bit of off-balanced feel to the um, to the picture, a bit of point of interest. And because it, again, with the burnt, as with the burnt uh, umber, the burnt. Sienna has a lot of red in it. And that tends to help take the eye into the painting. A bit of burnt umber, just to give it a bit of texture. And then a bit of Payne's grey. Down at the waterline. Just to give it a bit of form. It's morning rope. Okay. Let's try, I might put a little bit more detail in, but for the moment I think that's, that's fine, that's, that's enough. Good. And now for um, the reflections of the trees. Um, it's really much the same, this is very calm water, so the reflections are very are fairly accurate, so um, or fairly much the same as the actual objects themselves. So we in a couple of trunks there. Because the surface of the water will be slightly rippled, um, shapes won't be necessarily continuous. So I'm just establishing where the trees these reflections are going to be at the moment. So start 
on se retrouve de la manière. Dragging it from side to side. So because I'm using a fair amount of water, the uh, reflections are spreading out, which is nice. And looking, looking watery. Actually, looking slightly better than the, <laughs> the actual trees themselves. There we go. Um, drop in a little bit of that sienna there as well, just to reflect that. And then this next tree, this sort of fourth one, I started off with burnt umber, so we'll do the same again here now. You might find it easier to turn the painting the other way up and do it sort of upside down if you like but um, that's going all right drop in my green this is quite a sticky green so so you get the idea so I'm going to carry on with that for the moment. So that's the uh, painting more or less complete I think. One or two things I just want to point out. The white gap I'd left between the island and its reflection, I've shut that down in one or two areas so the white line is sort of stop and start. Um, going to the, the, uh, the rowing boat, the skiff there, um, I've actually established a white line there, again stop and start, and to do that I've used um, a Posca white uh, uni pen, and also used that to give myself one or two little white reflections um, in the, in the, against the dark uh, uh, areas below the island. Um, and just to make the reflections look as though there is in rippled water, I've used a rigger with some of the Payne's Grey just to paint in some very very light short stop and start uh, horizontal lines some of which I've used a bit of fresh water on just to soften them up a bit uh, here and there. Um, so the painting was all about um, timing especially with the background making sure that um, the washes you put in uh, later are slightly drier than the washes that are already there um, so you don't end up with a whole load of mushrooms everywhere, but you get these lovely soft areas uh, in the background. And the other thing always to point out is the contrast. Um, you've got this lovely light area around here, there's a sort of misty area against the darkness of the, the trees. So I'm always looking out for areas which give me that contrast, give me so that I can establish where my lightest lights are going to be at the background here and my darkest darks. Um, so that's um, I think the as far as I would go with this particular painting um, I've certainly enjoyed doing it. I hope you enjoyed watching uh, and I hope if you try something along the same sort of lines that you get plenty of success thank you for watching